the end of November, I released a video about the new chalk grassland being created using approximately 3 million cubic meters of spoil from the HS2 tunnels underneath the Chilterns. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the tunnels themselves. The twin bore Chilton tunnels at a length of 16 kilometers or 10 miles are the longest tunnels being constructed for HS2 and will eventually stretch from the M25 to South Heath in Buckinghamshire. Two tunnel boring machines or TBMs named Florence and Cecilia have been excavating the tunnels since summer 2021 and have now constructed over 90% of the tunnels. It was reported this week that they have now reached the Chesham Road intervention shaft which is one of five shafts that will provide ventilation and emergency access with the others located near Chalfont St Peter, Chalfont St Giles, Amersham and Little Missenden. In November, it was reported that half of the cross passages have been excavated. There will be 38 cross passages in total that will allow for safe evacuation of passengers to a waiting train in the opposite tunnel in case of emergency or train failure. The passages, which are between 15 and 20 metres long, have been dug using mini excavators. As the excavators progress, a sprayed concrete lining is applied to support the walls of the passages. The TBMs have been inching forward almost non-stop for two years, excavating mostly chalk material from beneath the Chilterns. As the TBMs move forward, workers construct concrete rings made up of ring segments that each weigh up to 8 tonnes, with the two tunnels requiring 112,000 ring segments in total. These segments are constructed at a factory situated alongside the M25, next to which is the home of the factory constructing the bridge sections for the Con Valley Viaduct. The site has a direct link to the M25, which is used for deliveries of sand, cement, aggregate and steel needed to construct the segments, thereby reducing the number of HGVs which have to use local roads to reach the site. Each segment is assembled using specially designed moulds into which steel reinforcing cages are placed, after which concrete is poured. After the concrete is cured, the segments are removed from the moulds and stored on site before being transported as required to the TBMs by specialised transporters. The transporters drive into the tunnels and then into the rear of the TBM, which has cranes capable of picking up and stacking the segments before they are brought to the area just behind the cut head where the rings are assembled. As the TBM moves forward, the excavated material is mixed with water to form a slurry, which is pumped to the southern tunnel portal located to the north of Denham. Once at the surface, the slurry is dried and processed, leaving a chalk cake which is then transported to the mitigation site by articulated dump trucks. There will be a link in the description if you want to know more about the new chalk grassland that is being created, which once complete will provide a valuable and rare natural habitat. During my visit to the mitigation site, I also got to see the porous tunnel portals which are currently being constructed. The portals, which are being constructed using steel reinforced concrete, will help to reduce the noise generated by trains within the tunnels. Although the tunnel portals have been used on other high speed rail networks in Japan and Europe, it will be the first time that they have been used in the UK. Each portal will be approximately 200 meters long and will be punctuated with holes which will help to reduce a phenomenon known as tunnel boom, which is caused by the piston effect. This occurs when air is pushed forward within the tunnels by the trains, creating a pressure wave, which upon reaching the tunnel portal can create a large boom sound. The portals are being constructed in situ using a huge movable mold that appears to be made up of three parts. The inner form traveler forms the inner shape whilst outer wall sections and a movable arch shaped outer mould form the external shape of the portals. The inner form traveller must be able to support the weight of the steel reinforcement and concrete as it is poured into the mould. Then once cured, the wall sections are disassembled and reassembled and the inner section is moved forward, ready for the next section to be constructed. The porous portals will be the only visible part of the monumental 16 km long engineering feat which is being used to reduce the impacts of HS2 on an area of outstanding natural beauty and residents living in and around Amersham. It will certainly be an interesting experience travelling from South Heath to London, as from there the trains will only emerge from underground briefly to travel over the 3.4 km long Con Valley Viaduct before entering tunnels once again to travel to Old Oak Common and hopefully eventually onto Euston. 